Hi, my name is Corey Goss, and in this video, I'll be introducing you to the new automatic driver trace feature within our SimVision debug solution. Specifically, these are the things we'll be covering within this video. So I'm now going to switch over to the demo. So I'm going to actually launch a script that will run a simulation. And this is an interactive simulation, but this, these same functionality, uh, sorry, the same features could be used in post-process just as easily. So I'm going to run my simulation. And what's going to happen in this simulation is we're going to get an assertion that's going to fire. And this assertion is due to the emergence of an X on one of the output lines of the DUT. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hyperlinks within my assertion messages and I'm going to click on the file. And when we do this, we see that the source browser opens with source annotation enabled because that's what I've selected by choosing this button up here. So we can see all of the values on this and you can see that bits 7 through 0 of this bus are actually X. And that's what's causing this assertion to fire. So I want to get to the root cause of where this X is coming from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bus and I'm going to send it out to the schematic. So I click here and I click on the send to schematic and we see a schematic opens with the module in question and we see X's on the dummy read bus lines. So I'm going to expand this out a little bit bigger so we can see exactly what's going on. So what we've done in the 13.1 release is we've actually um, simplified and streamlined the user interface to driver tracing. So now on all of the windows within SimVision, you'll see only three buttons. There is a trace drivers button, there's a trace loads button, and there is an automatic driver trace button. And the values, the icons within the buttons themselves are actually value sensitive. So you can see right now they have a little X that shows up within them. That's because we're tracing a, um, a signal that has an X value on it. If I were to select this one up here with a value of one, you see we have the same three buttons, but the X is actually disabled now. So this shows you that we're actually tracing a signal value that's non-X. So first off, I'm gonna introduce the basic trace X. This just traces one level back in terms of the drivers. So if I select my signal and I click trace X, this will take me one level back in the driving logic and um, what you'll see here is we'll go back through several levels of hierarchy, but we actually stop at this flip-flop here at a signal called WB dat uh, underscore zero. Now, if I want to trace another level back, I can always click on this pin and I could say trace X again. And now we see we've unfolded a mux here and gone through another block and read another signal. So I can continue to unfold the logic this way. Um, but what's a little bit easier is actually just let me do an undo, undo, and um, let me update the, uh, the value on my um, cursor. And what I'm gonna do now is go back to the same point we were at, and now I'm just gonna click on this automatic driver trace. And what this does is this unfolds the entire path for the uh, logic all the way to the root cause of the X. So you see here what we've done is we actually start with the dummy read bus X checker the same way we had before. But you'll, what you'll notice is that we've actually streamlined the view here because we could be going through many different levels of logic and many different uh, modules with lots of different pins. Uh, rather than clutter the display, we're only showing the user the pins that are of interest in the trace path that, uh, that they've selected. So here we isolate just the dummy read bus signal. And you can see that we've gone through one, two levels of hierarchy. Here's that flop we were at before. And here's the mux and it unfolds. We've gone through one, two, three levels of hierarchy again, all the way down to this location right here. So if I zoom in real close, I can see here is the final location that the trace path has come up to, um, come up with for determining where the X has emerged from. And um, you know, here if I unhide pins, I can see actually that what we're selecting is a RAM. And there's a location within the RAM that's noted by the DPRA signal value that is uh, reading back a value of an X. So 
how would we actually unfold this RAM and see what might be going on? I'm just going to actually select this pin and I'm going to say send this out to the source browser. And when I do that, you'll see here's the assignment that we were looking at. So DP0 equals RAM DPRA. And in this case, DPRA happens to have a value of 6. So that's what corresponds to this um, schematic entry we see here. Now, I might want to debug exactly why or what this RAM looks like. What are the contents? So in order to do that, I'm just going to select the DP0 pin. I'm also going to hold down uh, Control, and I'm going to select the DPRA pin. And I'm actually going to select the RAM itself. And what I'm going to do is just do Control w and send all of these out to the waveform window. And if I do a zoom out and zoom in a little bit closer to where we are, we can see here's the X that came out on the DP0 pins, right, that we were looking at within our schematic. Now, DPRA was being used to identify the RAM location we were reading from. So right now, DPRA has a value of 6. So if I expand out my RAM, right, and if I zoom out full, I'm looking for RAM location 6. And I can see here that RAM locations 0 through 5 all have values associated with them. But it looks like RAM location 6 has no value associated with it. So the root cause of this X is actually that we're reading from an uninitialized RAM location. And so uh, really we need to do a little bit further debug to see who's initializing the RAM, uh, what the, where the issue might be, whether we're um, reading inappropriately or we just forgot to actually initialize it. But we have gotten to the root cause of our X. Now the automatic driver tracing is a relatively new feature and uh, there's a number of preferences that go along with the, uh, with the feature itself for controlling it. So I'm going to show you what those preferences are right now. So if I just search for automatic in my preferences, I'll find that there's a number of different options here. I'm looking for the signal tracing options. And you can see everywhere where the word automatic shows up in the preferences, it's actually highlighted as yellow. I'm just going to clear those highlights. And you can see for automatic driver tracing, what we did in this demo was we used the schematic to click on the buttons themselves. So we could actually identify whether we wanted to do a automatic trace or a single driver trace. There are other options within SimVision, such as go to cause within the waveform window or double clicking in the source browser. Um, so there's ways of controlling what those double click actions and go to cause actions do, uh, specifically when you're tracing an X or when you're tracing a non X. Do you want to use the automatic driver tracing or not? Also, uh, you can tell the algorithms what to do when detecting uh, multiple X's and um, in particular for the schematic, do you want to actually unfold all paths when in, in the case where you've actually reached multiple X's. And um, also, um, just for performance reasons, we actually go back 20 cycle or 20 changes on a signal uh, to look for a match on that particular uh, signal for the value we're looking for. But you can control that to go a little bit further back if you'd like. Okay, so that is a basic introduction to some of the automatic driver trace features within the SimVision uh, solution.